We have to keep greenhouse gas emissions during composting in perspective. As it turns out, best management practices to produce a quality compost with minimal odour also appears to be the best management practices to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. There's three basic principles that we need to consider. Firstly, during the thermophilic or active composting stage, we need to provide enough air, we need to maintain temperatures between 55 and 65 degrees Celsius, and hopefully oxygen concentrations above 15 percent. Secondly, during curing, we need to manage the moisture and the aeration to hopefully keep the temperatures around 45 to 50 degrees Celsius or less. Thirdly, when we apply compost to the soil, we have to apply them at a rate where the nutrients in the compost can be utilized by the plants. There's two gases that we need to consider during composting. The first is methane, the second is nitrous oxide. Methane is fairly easy. It's produced by anaerobic bacteria when there's no oxygen present. The second gas, nitrous oxide, is a little bit more complicated because it's produced during two microbial processes. One, when ammonia is converted to nitrate, and the second, when nitrate is converted to dinitrogen or atmospheric nitrogen. We need to think about some of the microbial principles when we think of greenhouse gas emission reduction during composting. First, keep enough oxygen in the composting material, both during active composting and curing. The microbes that produce methane don't like oxygen, and when we provide oxygen, there isn't going to be much methane produced. Secondly, nitrous oxide is not produced during the thermophilic conditions that we see during the act of composting. Third, the more available carbon that we have going into the curing part of the process, the more nitrous oxide we're going to be emitting. So keeping the primary composting or the act of composting well aerated goes a long ways in reducing nitrous oxide emission during curing. Of course, the more nitrogen that there is in the composting material, the more likelihood there is of nitrous oxide emission. You may ask, what about ammonia? When we provide enough air during the primary or active composting process, we may actually increase the loss of nitrogen as ammonia into the air. Should we be worried about that? We'll talk about this in another video. My name is John Paul. I'm a soil scientist and waste management specialist. Thank you.